Alright guys, so I'm Bob here, Synchronistic Cubed, and this is my second tutorial, and today we're going to be showing you how to put 3D text into either real life uh, photos or COD in this example, that's probably what most people want to do it for. Um, now I've got some spectating here in COD 4, and I've put some 3D text in, and as you can see around the bottom we've got some nice ambient occlusion going on, and at the back we've got shadow with some shadow maps and a light. Um, so yeah. This video is the first in the series um, of a new series I'm starting uh, with a guy called uh, Meatball HD, Carlo, and uh, he's a mate from school, and we're going to call it Tutorial Tuesday, so every Tuesday we're going to upload a new video showing you how to do something in Final Cut, After Effects, um, Cinema 4D, maybe some 3ds Max later, um, so yeah, we're going to show you how to do lots of stuff in there, so please comment on this video and tell me uh, what you guys want to know how to do. Right, um, let's start a new document. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make a new material that's either going to be an image that I've got here that is of the COD spectating or it's going to be a movie. Uh, if you want to have movies then, if you record from an HD PBR, you want to um, put it into After Effects and render out again as a .mov file because you get occasionally green frame flashes. Uh, it might just be my computer but I think it's a kind of an issue with Cinema 4D and kind of the files that the HTPBR produces. So if we just open this up and click yeah, my image, shut that. You want to make a background that's in the light menu. So make a background and drag over the material. So now you can see it's in our view. And the 3D grid across here, we want to kind of arrange in line with the floor here. So uh, you can either move it around like this and with these buttons here, but you can also hold down control. Um, it might be also on a PC, I'm on a Mac. You hold down control on the keyboard and you can move it as uh, if you're viewing as like a camera, that's really good because you can get some different rotation that you can't get with the uh, the normal rotation like this. So line it up pretty crudely, it doesn't have to be completely exact, but yeah, just get it around the right space, that looks fine. Um, now, what you want to do is uh, put in your 3D text or whatever, I'm just going to put some 3D text for this example, but you can put cubes, this is the spectating from my cubes trailer, uh, so yeah, you can put any objects and stuff, so um, make some text, say cubed, like the example, um, choose a font, we're going to have, um, something, yeah, it looks that looks awesome. Yeah, we'll have that. Um, now, you see, if we render up, you can get the text on your background, but you haven't got any shadows around where it's touching or any shadows up the back. So what we need to do is we need to make a plane, and it's kind of easier if you do it from the top view. Um, if you stretch out your sides to make sure it's covering most of the area, you go back to our main view and that makes it a lot easier to kind of arrange if you have a plane in there just to kind of get it exactly at the right kind of level with your floor etc. Uh, now what you want to do is go to your render settings that I've got already down here but the button's up here if you need to get that on. Effect ambient occlusion. Now if we render this um, you can start to see that we're getting some shadows around where the text is touching the floor. Now, this is exactly the kind of shadows we want to be on the actual background of the COD, uh, but the plane is in the way. So, let's just stop this rendering. What you want to do is you want to go into plane and you want to put the same texture that you've got on the background onto here. There's two ways of doing this. You can either drag the material onto the plane and then click on the material here and change the projection to frontal. That means you're looking on at the same angle as you've got the background. Or what you can do is, if I just delete that, then you can control and drag over. Um, so the plane does exactly the same thing. It's just whatever you guys want to do. Um, so now it's on. And if we render this, then you can start to see that there's shadows kind of on there, but there's still this black box that we uh, really don't want. So now if we go into plane, uh, right click on it, Cinema 4D tags, and then down to compositing and we want to turn on a compositing background and what this does is it just tells it that it needs to only be visible where there's shadows etc and also turn off self shadowing that just puts any shadows that's, that's close to anything else that we don't want so now if we render out 
there's the shadows that are on the background uh, that looks like it's actually in the scene, uh, but there's no plane around it. Now this looks fine, you can start to see some shadows, but it's nothing particularly special at the moment. Um, now what you can do is if we want to have shadows coming out the back, then we're going to have to put a light in. Just go back to my uh, different views here and put this out about here and move it up. Now if you look in the scene, you can see the shadows are kind of going to the right, kind of at an angle. So if you want to try and line your light up that, uh, to the kind of position that would make those shadows that's sort of in the left top hand corner. Um, now what you can do is go to your light. In the attributes menu, you want to go to shadows and turn on shadow maps. That are kind of the softer shadows and also turn the density down because if you look at the shadows, they're kind of weak. Uh, that we because if you had 100%, it's shadows get really really hard. So around kind of 30, 20 is is fine. Now for end of this up, you'll start to see some shadows hopefully. But yeah, you can see the. Uh, the shadows starting to come off the back, and now you might get if your lights too um too close, then you'll start to see the shadows are cut off where the plane ends. So if you uh, go back in here and just stretch out your plane out the back to make sure where the shadows reach to, and also just go out the side just to um, cover up all the areas. Now that's pretty much it. I'm just going to um add a bit of global illumination. Now this is a really good tip if you want to have global illumination but just kind of if you're rendering just to test off if you go to your irritants cache and turn down these two top ones that's the um, yeah that samples and record density then if you turn those both to low then it, it definitely speeds up your render time also I'm going to change this to IR plus QMC still image that makes sure that you start to get if you have a texture in the scene then you start to get the kind of the colour spilling onto your text etc so if you have at the bottom there starts to be some red if they have a red kind of base that's that's looks it makes it look a lot more realistic so it looks like it's in the scene. And um also just turn my diffuse depth up a little bit and if you have a light in the scene then we can turn down the intensities a little bit uh, around 80 ish. Um now if we go back uh, into our scene then if we render that up Hopefully it won't too, do t take too long to do the um, global illumination. Oh, that was alright. Uh, now you're starting to see that the lighting's a lot nicer. And out the back, the shadows are there. So yeah, that's um, really nice. I might just actually quickly change the font this up a bit. Tad on. Uh, let's get some basic. Um, that's good. Got impact the same as last time. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, that's why I just move up a little bit. Just go to the floor. Now, if I remember this, global nation do its thing. Now you can see that we're really starting to get some nice shadows. Uh, to make sure you've got, you see the black lines across here. It doesn't really matter when there's um when you don't have global illumination on because there's the default light and it doesn't really matter but what we want is we want to have a kind of kind of ambient glow all the way all the way around so if you turn on a sky then you'll see that your background disappears so add another compositing tag to your sky and click scene by camera so there's still the light coming onto the text but you don't want to see the white anywhere around the background so if we just render that one out now you're starting to see a lot more light on it renders out, you can see that the black parts of the top has gone so it looks definitely more realistic. It's hard to get some shadows at the bottom, a little bit of the uh, floor colour kind of spilling onto the bottom, that's, that's nice. And then out the back, you can just maybe see the shadows, The glow, um, if you put the sky in then it, it, it lights up the scene so the shadows disappear a bit more so if you just turn the density more. And turn down. Gamma. That should hopefully stay a bit bright, but hopefully if out the back there's some shadows. If there's the render. Yeah, you can start to see there's 
just a really faint line there. So you, yeah, you just definitely have to just turn this off if you're using um, global illumination. Yeah, so that's the uh, the basic kind of thing. You can swap out the text for cubes and anything really. You just put your shapes in there and just leave the, the floor. Then you render that up, and then your your shapes in there. So yeah, it's um it's a pretty basic kind of thing that you can put it into your photos or. Uh, first, if you want to Google Images or just your card spectating. So, yeah, that's the end of the tutorial. Please subscribe to me and uh, also Meatball HD because that's where I'll be uploading my tutorials every Tuesday. Well, also my channel, but yeah, it's for his subscribers as well. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and tell me what you want for your next tutorial. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Bye.